Hello. Today is June 5th. We're here with security and nonsense. Who knows what strangeness has unfolded <coughs> since the beginning of the week. What? Hopefully this will be a lighter episode to bring your spirits up. Wendell's eating his... If you can still hear us. Wendell's eating his coffee and apple combo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, apparently there was a little piece of apple there. That's not the thing. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm good. Coffee and apple. What a terrible snack. <laughs> it is a little bit... Weird, didn't, didn't yeah. plan that. Conflicting flavors, yeah. perhaps. <laughs> Well, you know what else wasn't planned? Getting hacked. And uh, major universities probably came as a big surprise because I don't think they're in session right now, right? Maybe they're doing the online thing. They're Yeah, but they're done for the semester. They're probably, you know, it's like they're wearing jeans. You know, their ties are loose. They're just taking it easy. It's like, oh, nothing bad's going to happen. Oh, you know, uh, uh, Michigan State University Network has been breached in a ransomware attack. But, you know, if they had stored their data on Linode... <laughs> they probably wouldn't have been think, able to uh think there would have been some legal challenges <laughs> <laughs> linode sponsored this episode of the news there's a 20 dollars coupon below <laughs> linode is a virtual private server host among other things you can get kubernetes we've used them for years even before they sponsored the news there's a 20 dollars credit in the links below you should check that out self-host your own documents your own VPN, your own... We, we talked about it a lot in the first episode of the news this week, but you really should check out Linode if you're interested in self-hosting any of your own stuff because it's a pretty good deal. They're pretty fast servers. They've got, you know, everything from very small instances to very large instances. If you find yourself working at home and wanting to learn new skills, things like, you know, maybe automatically deploying something, setting up a source code repository, setting up your own VPN, your own book server, whatever, Linode's got some options that are just a few clicks to set that up and it's and, uh, reasonably secure your personal documents you know if you're worried about something that you know you might not normally think about like i don't know your house burning down might be good to have a backup of those yeah not on somebody else's cloud yeah no no does actually have very inexpensive block storage it's cheaper than amazon s3 so you see these nases that'll back up to amazon s3 it's compatible with s3 but uh, it's uh, it's actually cheaper by quite a bit. So yeah, go do it. Go check out that Linode link. So yeah, Michigan State uh, they are not only I don't think they were encrypted, or at least if they were encrypted, they were also exfiltrated. And the uh, threat is we're going to release all this student data yeah. unless you give us the ransom. Some of it was encrypted. So bad, bad news. news. We're probably going to have some follow-ups on that next week, depending on what they do. So, not a good situation. And uh, one thing, now, if you are a user of the One tab to look at the news stories, uh, you will notice as you load those news sites, you are bombarded with notifications. It's like, hey, disgusting. do you want to allow this? Do you want to allow it? Do you want to allow it? Oh, I hate it so much, which is why this is really welcome. Although, if you read the fine print, I don't think they go far enough. Google to enable Chrome anti-notification spam system in July 2020. This is, they've, they've come up with a whole scheme for managing the pop-up notices. But I think that it's really dumb because the solution to this is to just put an icon in the address bar and just have it be like, oh, if you would like to be notified, you can click this icon and t teach that to people. They did put an well, icon there, but it doesn't work like that. They have done that, but it's only in very specific situations yeah. and it's it's really... A lot of loopholes here. They made it a lot more complicated than it needs to be. Should be always thing. But hey, better than nothing, right? I I'm, think Firefox actually did a better job with this. Firefox almost always is trumping them when it comes to security features. It's like, is, it works better. I mean, it's like, it's more well thought out, but a poor implementation. For years, we have known the dangers that sandworms present to ghosts specifically <laughs> and spice extractors forget about it it's a huge risk for spice extractors but now we've also learned that email servers can come under attack by them nsa warns of new sandworm attacks on email servers this is a another source for that reuters article that we covered in the government section but this has a little different take on it russia's military hackers have been targeting xm servers to plant back doors since august of 2019 they're stepping it up and that's a known bug that just hasn't been patched. So it's not like there's some crazy new infiltration technique. They're just taking advantage of the situation with their disgusting sandworms. 
when you are a hacker group, uh, usually when you have an exploit, you are working on a limited amount of time before it's discovered and then entered into the antivirus. Uh, what's the name of that website where they've like opened up all that stuff and everybody shares it? Threat something? Oh, yeah. Uh, I thought I was going to say cert, but yeah, you're talking about the... Uh Anyway, the we've gotten good at sort of, you know, collectively getting together all the various various malwares and identifying them, which makes this attack interesting <laughs> because they're aware of that, obviously. Turla, a hacker group, steals antivirus logs to see if its malware was detected. Turla, one of Russia's most advanced hacker groups, has created malware that gets its orders from email attachments sent to an arbitrary Gmail inbox. Okay. It's an interesting command and control system. Now, do you think they created this logo picture here or is this something no, that no, uh, think, ZDNet came yeah, up with? Yeah, ZDNet came up with that. So it's interesting that the hacker groups are targeting the antivirus companies not, not for any other reason other than to just see if the antivirus companies are working on detecting them, their malware. Android users, uh, a while back, they had a an exploit on Android which could trick you into clicking on an, an icon of an app that you trusted but instead, in the operating system, you would end up with another app, which is super, super dangerous. Luckily, they patched that, but it has been reborn. <laughs> New Android vulnerability, Strand Hog 2.0, exploits user trust. And they've got a helpful diagram here. Krista, what do you think about the... Uh, doesn't that remind you of me with a Viking helmet? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing at a super happy fun game once installed. I also like the... Uh, the bad actor here with his red laptop. <laughs> Do yeah. not taunt super happy fun game. That's so, what uh, Anonymous looks like. They have a red laptop and they wear a hoodie <laughs> in public all the time. If you let your kid play with your phone or you know you install suspicious apps or anything like that, you are at risk for this and you would have no idea that one app is taking over and it could spoof the login page or whatever. Yeah. Gives full permissions or whatever permissions you grant to... <laughs> Facebook yeah. totally needs these permissions. Oh, I've granted it to the malware. Oh. Which makes all those permission-hungry apps more of a threat. Yeah. Because no app should have those permissions. Yeah. Disgusting. I like this story. because. Do you think one group named itself because of the other group? Because it was Blue Mockingbird and Red Sparrow? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like, it sounds like <laughs> bad fiction. Thousands of enterprise systems infected by new Blue Mockingbird malware game. So they're uh, they're infecting enterprise servers. This one was not Exum. This one was something else. I've forgotten. Yeah, I don't remember the details of this one. Uh, I just remember the red. Oh, it's Red Canary. I'm sorry, not oh, Red Sparrow. Uh, uh, Telerik. This is a .NET thing. So if you're using the Telerik library, like a UI library, it turned out it had some problems. So you your web app could be vulnerable even without you realizing it if you use this library. And, of course, the... Juicy potato exploit. <laughs> <laughs> they really are good at coming up with names, aren't they? Juicy we, potato. We also, yeah, I mean, the, the idea of a juicy potato seems kind of disgusting, doesn't it? Yeah. You want your, you want your, you want your potato to be moist, I think, and not fluffy. dry. Yeah. Fluffy is the word I would go with. There was that time I vaporized the potato in the office microwave. Did you, like, Didn't you leave it in for like forever? I don't. I just. I yeah. It must have been something like that because I came back to it later and there was just a potato husk and it, the potato inside was completely gone and it was coating the inside of the microwave. We tried Ooh. to make uh, potatoes in the wood burning stove one time and got charcoal like, out of it. <laughs> that happens quickly. <laughs> There's always a massive data leak every week, almost every week. I, maybe sometimes we might skip one, but it's probably just because I didn't see the story rather than it not happening. <laughs> it's, it is constant. But this one, now this is not uh, individual humans, just individual records, but the number is still impressive. A massive database of 8 billion Thai internet records leaks. So this is the browsing, like the web, it's not, not exactly browsing history, I guess, but it is it kind of DNS. browsing browsing and DNS, yeah. yeah. And so this is like here in the U.S. when their ISPs are like, no, no, we don't need to encrypt DNS. Here's Exhibit A of yes, we do actually need to encrypt, encrypt a DNS, and we shouldn't trust Firefox with with this either. Like this should be should be running your own DNS server on Linode. And this is one of those situations where the guy found it and went to the company that was having the problem and tried to get in contact with them and just crickets for a week. Yeah. And then he went to all of the various uh, news outlets. 
It was fixed in an hour. You could also do a pie hole. You could, you know, get a Raspberry Pi and run the pie hole, which will block a lot of ads as well. But then your Raspberry Pi can rotate through a whole series of DNS servers securely and encrypted. And then they're not going to have your browsing history. Most people don't do that. Nope. So you could totally uh, identify someone if you went to the trouble based on those, because you have an IP address and you have the traffic. Yeah. Bad news. This one... When I first read this headline, I was like, why Why would they do that? That seems really bad. Now, that does seem like a pretty good reason for doing it. But at the same time... Terrifying. I don't want it done yeah. to me. It sets a bad precedent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. Uh, you, you definitely think about this one. And it turns out uh, there's a lot of websites that do this. So you can... Uh, actually, the top uh, link in this article shows you a couple of the other ones eBay port scans visitors' computers for remote access programs. So this is implemented in JavaScript. It turns out the JavaScript security model allows the web browser to make outgoing connections to other ports on the same machine. So it's possible for a JavaScript program to look for a local application. But in eBay's case, it's looking for things like VNC and remote desktop and other things like that that are open to see if you have been hacked or compromised in some way. So like TeamViewer or any place control or any desk or, you know, VNC, whatever. Uh, the eBay, uh, I don't know what, the, analytics is looking to see if those programs are running on your computer and uh, if you have like a guessable or vulnerable password on things like VNC or remote desktop because it may be uh, a sign that your computer's been compromised. Yeah, it makes sense because someone could be making fraudulent purchases uh, with your eBay account. And they could you know, maybe flag that. So, yeah, okay, I, I kind of get that. Now, if we look at some of the other names, uh, TD Ameritrade, that's, you know, stock trading. Okay, all right, makes sense. Citibank, online banking, makes total sense. But Chick-fil-A? <laughs> Listen, they have been burned so hard. <laughs> is Chick-fil-A So hard by credit card fraud. So <laughs> hard. I, that info. I don't think you can buy things on the Chick-fil-A website, can you? <laughs> Maybe, yeah, you uh, probably can do like online t-shirts ordering, and bet. stuff. Let's look. <laughs> I think that's the app. I think you have to have the app. No, there, I bet there, not. there are several commercial websites that I saw implement EverCookie. It's like, oh, I want to be able to uniquely identify a visitor forever, and it's like uh, EverCookie was really just a proof of concept. But okay, yeah. uh, terrifying. No, Certainly. you can totally order delivery. Really, right on, on the website. website. Yep. Hmm. Oh, delivery. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. they did delivery. Delivery is, is available directly from Chick-fil-A, but it's also available through our partners, DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub. What well, stories about eBay like that that make me think teaching sand to think was a mistake? It was. Wow, yeah. Store.level1text.com. <laughs> That's kind of what we're doing with it after we taught it. It's, it's not doing it on its own. <laughs> Now, when we talk about these sorts of, uh, you know, you, you throw up a database without a password or you get fished or you have a, you know, a stupid password. Crystal was just perusing the, uh, the list of law enforcement passwords, the <laughs> anonymous. <laughs> and uh, they were not good. They were <laughs> they, not. They, they definitely don't have a password policy. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboys, all lowercase. But when we think about these things, you know, like cops, maybe not the most technical people in the world. And we always think about, it's like, oh, it's grandma, or it's like, you know, people who are just really non-technical that are falling for all these things. But uh, maybe not. Maybe some of the people who work in very technical jobs fall for the same things. GitLab runs a phishing test against its own employees, and 20% handed over their credentials. So the GitLab test here, uh, the the testing company registered a GitLab domain. It was like gitlab.io or gitlab.dev or something like that. And they recreated like a login page and then they just sent phishing emails to the people in the company. And 20% of them supplied their credentials and it was only like 5 or 7% actually even reported it. So so the ones that didn't fall for it might have just been lazy. Yeah. Sad. Of course, they are owned by Microsoft now. Do you think Microsoft replaced no, a bunch no, of them? No, no, that's, that's GitHub. Oh, okay, let's get Lab. Get Lab's the open source. Oh, that's even sadder. Yeah, because GitLab, GitLab is at the final last bastion of freedom and hope with the Microsoft buyout of GitHub. Until they get hacked. Because you can host your own GitLab on Linode. Uh, 
this uh, I think these used to be much more exciting than they are now because we know that there, a timer starts as soon as this is released and it's not a long term solution but I guess we can still feel good about it just you know on some level hackers release new jailbreak that unlocks every iPhone let me turn the headline around for you every iPhone in law enforcement possession right now can now be unlocked <laughs> yeah. Bad news for Grey Key. <laughs> the sales are going to be down. Although I imagine with what's going on right now, they're collecting a lot of phones. Yeah. Yes. How many videos have we not seen? Uh, there were there were actually um, on one of the security lists. Um, they had the um, cell jammers out, which is a violation of the FCC laws. You're not you're just not you're not allowed to do that. To just do straight up jamming. And wasn't um, that in Chicago? I think yeah. I had read that. And uh, there, there was also um, the Stingray, the Stingray stuff, uh, the app that detects Stingray. Th those were all over the place. So all of the metadata from those phones have, have been collected. Not the data on the phone, but like the IMEI and the subscriber information. It's going to be like, you were at this location whenever, because they've got all that data. I understand the idea of jamming the phones because you don't want communication. But I am shocked by how little communication there seems to be among the protesters. Because... Yeah. The police will form a line and they'll start to move the protests back. And I'm sitting there thinking like, why is nobody flanking? Yeah. Here's an idea if you're a protester and you know, just, just bear with me here because you've got social media and you know, during the daytime to get this ready, bannermen, <laughs> All right? police form a line. You rally one of your banners off to circle around the block and you can have their numbers. I, they, I really feel like, if they just apply themselves a little bit, they'd be much more effective. Did but you the see the guy who stole the horse? I think this was in Houston. He stole the poor <laughs> horse. It's getting wild. The poor horse. You think they'd have more discipline? <laughs> so they don't have bannermen, but they do have cavalry now in Houston. Well, one guy. <laughs> What's yeah. he gonna do? <laughs> but yeah, think about that. You know, banners. Just yeah, I think that would be a good addition to your. Uh, protests Krista did you use the Adobe cloud on Wednesday I, no I don't think so well you're like I saved out a bunch of images like Tuesday but you're lucky that you didn't need it because it wasn't yeah. there are you gonna read it photos photo stopped Adobe cloud evaporates in mass outage Hope no one, none of you had a deadline eh it's Canadian <laughs> that's the register isn't that to uh... Uh, England? I don't know. You should click I'm on the Linus sure. Torvalds link there, too. <laughs> you know, I purposely didn't put this story in because it's <laughs> hero worship horse shit. We'll scroll down. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't know what you're looking at. How, how erect were you for 35 minutes after you saw this? No comment. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so, the uh, the world of uh, buying drugs has gone online. It's gone high tech. <laughs> and even if you're not operating on the dark web, apparently your burner phone is like you know super important because that's your contacts. You don't probably don't want to keep paper copies. And because of that, and because of the world of big data, an amazing thing has happened. Drug dealers turned corporate by selling customers' databases for more than $180,000. The headline suggests a level of sophistication that maybe is not there. These are drug mules phones. So it's like, uh, you know, I'm tired of being a drug mule. I've got my phone that's got all these contacts in it. I'm just going to sell my phone. $180,000. They point out that the, that was a really good phone. The average one is more like twenty or 30000 But still. That's a nice little chunk of change. That's you know, a down payment. And that's definitely a business that you probably want to get out of before, you know, the inevitable happens. Do you think if the war on drugs was, was legitimate that that would be a trivial amount of money to come up with considering the amount of spending on literally everything else? Or would that drive the prices up? Well, if the war on... What do you mean if it was legitimate? So, like... If they actually wanted to stop, you know, the proliferation of drugs, they could just buy these phones for more than they're, they're worth on the market. And then 
They no, would, no. would dramatically disrupt the supply. That would be unintended consequences. That would be like when they tried to ban the, or when they put a bounty on the cobras in India. <laughs> and then everybody started breeding cobras. Because you're going to have to go through the trouble of checking all those numbers to make sure they're real. Yeah, yeah that's true. No, if you wanted to stop this kind of thing, you would legalize drugs. <laughs> and you know who would do this better than anybody else and put them all out of business? Amazon. <laughs> And they'd be pure, safe. Maybe we need a, a comment engagement challenge. What would the Amazon be called? And don't say Silk Road because that's just. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, they uh, they would do something like really high minded, like expand your consciousness type of thing. You know? Doctor Fix. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, can you see like a commercial where? You know, the kids are going crazy and, you know, dinner's burning and she's like, oh, I just can't handle this. And then she just does a lot. <laughs> Everything's okay. Get the energy you need to complete your tasks for the day. It would be like those old time, uh, you know, like uh, elixirs from the old west. It was just basically cocaine in a bottle. I, there was a... Uh... I, it would it would not be allowed now, but the the kid like the the kids going crazy with like the mom that was totally a thing in like Saturday Night Live or in Living Color or something because she got a prescription like it wasn't like it was making fun of ADHD meds, but uh, she got a thing and she just sprayed a puff of something in their face and then they would just go comatose and it's like now you can have you can finally have peace with your kids and it was like the kids just sitting around the table comatose. I mean, if that were legal, <laughs> people would definitely do yeah. that. Right? Yeah, they definitely would. <laughs> Uh, 5G fear, I guess is what we would call that phenomenon. People who think that 5G is uh, either causing cancer or mutating their cells or possibly transporting the virus. <laughs> uh, that's a big thing. A lot of people buy into that. Krista, you're yawning. Huh? You're yawning. I can't help it. Go to bed. <laughs> A no. lot of people buy into that, and so many. And it turns out, some uh, someone with an entrepreneurial spirit has figured out a way to capitalize on it, but it's not real. <laughs> a three hundred and fifty dollar wow anti five G device is just a hundred and twenty eight meg USB stick. A tear down finds. How sad that it, they chose the smallest amount to give you. <laughs> but but also, it's got this cool little. I don't know if this is the actual one, but it's like it's got a little carving thing on it, a little etching or drawing. That's probably like a, a saint. That's $350 worth. You think that's like some sort of Catholic iconography, or like anti-disease, or did they even put that much thought into it? It looks like <laughs> a guy on a horse to down. me. Is this some kind of Rorschach test? It looks like a colonial yeah, I see person, a horse. A yeah. Colonial yeah, person a horse. riding a horse. But then there's like a cloud under it. Yeah. That's its tail. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, what do you think, like if you put yourselves in these people's shoes, how did you come on to 350 as the number? Um, you wanted to be a large enough number that is only the most stupid person will buy <laughs> so as to avoid well, refunds. I think you know that this there's a timer on this. Yeah. So I get why you'd move pretty high, but 350 seems extreme to me. Probably they also had a warehouse full of like the little USB sticks that are that are in this. We're probably just forgotten about in a drawer in a warehouse somewhere. Well, you could get those from China for probably like, what, a dollar each, if that? Probably not even that. Yeah. They probably don't even make those anymore because they're so useless. Yeah, so. And it doesn't really even have to do anything because plug it in and I, I don't know. Our next story is, I think, what you've been alluding to for Krista. No, we've got a couple of these <laughs> for Krista. So, Krista, yeah, I think this is definitely a headline that you need to read because uh, people yeah, need no more. My if reality. You, if you question the validity of any of these studies, I think just observing Krista will galvanize this one nicely. A Monday is a Tuesday is a Sunday as COVID-19 disrupts internal <laughs> clocks. You said the name. No. Ah, whatever. Because of your exhaustion of it. <laughs> a global natural experiment examines the time warp of life under quarantine. So they point out, yeah, they point out that not only do you not know, like the days seem longer because nothing's happening. So you're in sort of that hell of, you know, boredom and not and listlessness. But when you look back on it, it doesn't seem like you actually lived any of that time. It's a compression. Yeah. I had to last Monday was insanely busy. Like I had to make sure all my grades were in and like, there was just a million little things and I could not concentrate on work. It was like, I shouldn't even be working today. And it's like, wait, no, today's Monday. I was like, no, it's Saturday. No, it's Monday. 
I just I couldn't even I couldn't focus couldn't and it's just I don't know I don't know what the problem was just uh. probably five G. <laughs> <laughs> I need one of those five G blocker things. I'm thankful for having a job. I mean, for multiple reasons, but like, it does kind of feel like you have to be like, that's like the one thing that's giving me any semblance of structure because it's like okay, <laughs> I need to be online and working on these things this amount of time. <laughs> Because people are looking for you. Like, where's this yeah. at? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, I can respond to emails during this time and then, like, work on other stuff. And then well, the rest of the time, it's, like, just weird floating non-timeline. <laughs> it's interesting that you say that because the portion of the population who doesn't have to think about that seems to have complete. And I, I felt like I, I used to do this anytime there was a holiday or, you know, summer or whatever. This happened pretty quickly to me when I was young. Yeah. It seems like a natural thing. And sure enough. Lockdown teens stay up all night and sleep all day, as Krista was yep. describing earlier. Yep. You were up until four? Yeah, Krista, you're kind of doing this. I am a little bit, yeah. Yeah, on weekends I stay up just obscenely late. And I'm not staying up, like, as late as I stayed up this weekend on weekdays, but, like, still pretty late on weekdays, too. Now, you blamed it on the, uh, watching the protest, but what about last weekend? I was I was up late last weekend, but not nearly as late. I was up till like one. Well, this next this next story once again, I I kind of thought about Krista when I saw this <laughs> because uh, Krista, you definitely have taken the virus more serious than anybody that I know. Yes, and uh, it seems like you are also now. You, you do have a extenuating circumstance with your mom, but yeah. you seem like you are maybe more terrified of it than anybody else I know as well. Census Bureau reports spike in signs of anxiety and depression since coronavirus. Well, there's only 30 million unemployed people. I can't imagine what they would have anxiety and depression about. Isn't it up about. to 40 million now? Oh, uh, it's not like the world's burning. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. People, that's the thing is like the people have nothing else to do right now. And so it's like, they're like, oh, the pre- protests will end after the weekend. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, look, it, yeah, okay, there's a pandemic, but it's not like we can't get auto parts or cheap Chinese <laughs> goods, or delicious square burger. I mean, come on, we've still got that. We can get burger for now. At least until somebody burns those places down. Oh, yeah, no way. Or, or <laughs> oh, all that the, was the, cr- joke. the thing virus uh, <laughs> causes enough infections that they have to shut the meat plants back down. Now for our next story, we're gonna have to be really careful to enunciate, or we're gonna get caught <laughs> up in the algorithm. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty thing. Isn't there a... A series of uh, engines named after this yes, that are very yes, popular. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, uh, this is just a, a uh, it's the algorithm gone wild. We, we did some work for that company, as a matter of fact. Also, back in the day. this is just a, a a part of being a human. <laughs> I mean, really, do we need to to limit the speech here? Anti porn filters stop Dominic Cummings trending on Twitter. So the name of the PM's aide is blocked, which has led to a variety of misspelt hashtags. I don't know. This apparently the hashtag was to uh, fire him. I don't know anything about this. Do you? No. I mean, I, listen. There's there's so much to keep up with over here. There's no time for international politics. <laughs> well, the, the, the article the article did wax poetic about how things like the algorithm is not too selective because things like um, cumulative and uh, accumulate and stuff like that are not caught up. Well, in the they they got around it by adding an M. Hmm. So it won't catch that for whatever reason. I would think the S on the end because adding the S makes it nonsensical in that context. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, ridiculous. Ridiculous what Twitter is spending time on considering all of their other troubles at the moment. Algorithmic filtering is never going to be good for society. Yeah, well, it's coming. It's already here. It's coming. <laughs> there goes the, the <laughs> <laughs> it's context uh, the uh, pandemic has been bad for almost everybody I mean of course you know Amazon and grocery stores and stuff some people are benefiting from it but in the animal kingdom well you know I, th- I guess my cats are really enjoying it uh, YouTube well I have a thing YouTube has there were some horrifying but I can't look away in the sense of like a train wreck in progress videos that were on YouTube and they took them down because I looked for them for this article. About this? Yes. Oh man, I'd like to, well, I kind of wouldn't No, want to it was, it was, it was disturbing. It was like Hannibal Lecter disturbing. Oh yeah. So with restaurants closed, the CDC warns of increasingly aggressive rodents looking for new food sources. So this is, a, it was a video of two really like cat sized rodents 
fighting with one another on like a porcelain tile floor. That they, they point out that uh, cannibalism is a way up and infanticide. And that's one of the things about rodents where it's just like pure survival. And if they get to a point where they're like, you know what? These kids aren't going to make it. Let's just get those calories back in there. <laughs> Let's, Let's, uh, this is the apocalypse event for July, I think. You think the rats? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, June the, is the, the fall. And food the, trucks and stuff should start to open back up. So they'll probably, you know, the well, po- population will decline for sure. People are probably snacking during the protests, right? Yeah. Yeah, just throwing, discarding there. So I, mean, I don't know if that would keep the entire population of rats afloat, though. But there was there were other scary videos of like, you know, like twenty or thirty rats in a street level trash can. Just you know, it was just a sea of. Fur. You don't want to be the rat on the bottom. Yeah. Right. Bottom rat is is not a good thing to be. It's like thirty rats fighting over half a hot dog. <laughs> oh, See, also nice. YouTubers fighting for viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Store dot level one text dot com. <laughs> Now, uh, we have, uh, we've had this discussion before, and the chat has answered, sometimes in conflict with one another. Audi? Is it Audi? Audi. Audi? I think it's Audi. An Audi and an Audi. 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 A, that car manufacturer <laughs> with the funny name. Uh, they have a race team, and it seems like, of course, all sports are canceled because of the pandemic. But eSports of that same thing, because every sport has a, a game version now have kind of taken over. But the surprising thing is people being good at one thing does not make you good at the other thing. <laughs> and it seems like some of them are really bummed out by that. Audi drops driver for secretly using a ringer to compete in virtual race. We reported on this last week or the week before. And he said, oh, this was a big joke. It was a did big we? misunderstanding. We did. But Audi had not dropped him at that point. I had no memory of that. It was uh, pretty sure. But uh, he said it was a joke. Like... I was like, oh, this is going to be a joke. It's going to be a big reveal. Ha, ha, ha. And yep. then, but the driver was like, wait, what? It became a joke the moment he got caught. Yeah. Now, if you see the Zoom, it's funny because they had like the Zoom of all the... Oh. It's uh, uh, up. Oh. Uh, right there? No, there was one There's that showed... Of them. Oh, no, here it is. Here it is. So it's really hard to see, but uh, he's the guy with just the mics so right, perfectly positioned in front of his face. So he's wearing this guy's shirt. Oh, no, here it is. Here it is. Yeah. He's wearing this guy's shirt, but you can never actually see his face. <laughs> Oops. Because it wasn't him. Now, his, uh, uh, his stand-in actually wrecked and only came in third. But you still get to be on the digital podium if you come in third. So, uh, <laughs> nobody there. Oh. And they didn't interview him or try to interview him, even though there should have been audio there. So, it seems like somebody was in on it. I don't know. Mm. Anyway, he's out of the real race team, and the imposter is out of his e-racing team. Yeah. Oops. Unfortunate. This, uh, <laughs> I was not, apparently this is common knowledge, that this guy's into all this stuff. I had no idea. I had no idea. I this is incredible. Either. You gotta wonder, based on the hours that are represented here, when does he have time to do his princely duties? <laughs> I don't even know what I think we, we know the answer to that. <laughs> you know, after reading some of the things I've seen various country leadership accused of in the last week, <laughs> if this is what they want to spend their money on, more power to them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Although, if let's say that you're on his team and and you, you know, like feed too much, is there yeah. a risk? <laughs> Could that spill over into the real world? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> You're executed for being a feeder. <laughs> yeah, really. Saudi Arabia's, Arabia's crown prince has spent over $6,000 on the international 2020 battle pass. So they've got this a leaderboard. It's like pay to win. And uh, yeah. he's. I don't understand. I thought Dota was... It's free, right? Yeah. Like what do you pay for? I don't know. I, don't, I think it's free to play, but then yeah. I guess you're, I assume you maybe like weapon upgrades or certain characters. I don't know. Is the, it pay to win? There's a leaderboard. There's a leaderboard. that's definitely pay to win. So he's uh, way ahead of the, of Andy here. The <laughs> Just number two. Just little Andy. And they point out that over the lifetime, he has spent uh, something like 80 grand. His, his handle is also super hilarious. Oh yeah. Yeah. Perfect devil angel Yukio. 
Of course. Of course that's his handle. That's, of course. Is that some anime shit? Yeah, probably. <laughs> can, can you imagine <laughs> the Saudi king? How disappointed he must be. <laughs> it's like, son's a weeb. His son's got an anime avatar. It's like, son, you, you wield some of the most power in the Middle East. Get rid of this weeb shit. <laughs> it's like, dad, I'm jungling. <laughs> so uh, $69,494 lifetime for his Dota account. He is uh, the only person to ever reach level 175,000. I don't know what any of that means. Do you think when they announce him for like state functions, like all of his merits and stuff, they bring up any of this stuff? <laughs> his Royal Highness Yukio. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. What was it? Beautiful something? Perfect devil. Perfect Grand devil. Master. <laughs> That's perfect devil, as in like purr like a cat with five R's. <laughs> Noob Slayer XXX. At gmail.com. <laughs> oh, it's uh, another title that's going to require enunciation. Yeah, well, uh, the, you got, I got to give this guy credit. He got burned, but he just went with it. Yeah. And he avoided a lot of the embarrassment. I would have laughed. Mississippi's governor was tricked into congratulating Harry Azcrack during an online graduation ceremony. It's funny because I'm 12. <laughs> he it just it, like he just rolled with it. It is funny. He later tweeted, he was like, oh, next I'll be congratulating Ben Dover, which is one of the least creative ones. <laughs> Harry Azcrack's pretty good. Uh, I got to bring up my favorite one ever that I pulled from an actual website that we were working on. <laughs> That they wanted into the uh, the blacklist, <laughs> Kareem Pie. <laughs> That's P Y E. Oh, there was a the the uh, uh, the manager of a Walmart was actually named Mike Hunt. I gotta think that's a pretty common name. They paid you money intercom fairly regularly. Although that's a sheltered, like, how did those parents never hear that joke? <laughs> well, this, uh, you know, I mean, before we look at the headline here, let's just take a moment to appreciate uh, Mother of the Year, uh, 2020. Uh, uh, I forgot what she named her, her child. Can you refresh my memory? I believe it's pronounced Kyle. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. <laughs> I no, I thought it was Ash. Is it? No, I don't know. They keep changing their mind. No, I'm pretty sure it's Kyle. X something A E. It's like some Unicode characters. So uh, it turns out that the state database won't accept numbers, so they had to change that to Roman numerals. Nice. And Twelve. Anyway, it's Grimes, and she wants news headlines. I guess. Do you think? Because clearly these are two people that really love attention. Is it kind of eating her up inside that the birth of the child should have been more an event, but now it's like, oh, he's sending people to space. Oh, everybody's <laughs> paying attention to him. I, I thought you were going to say People are rioting in the streets. Uh. <laughs> SpaceX has eclipsed uh. <laughs> <laughs> the birth of their child. <laughs> and his trajectory to becoming a young man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, she's an idiot, and she wants uh, to do art stuff. Uh, she's selling a piece of her soul for a cool $10 million. Not only that, but some of her sketches and her uh, artistic side that's not music, I guess. Okay. I wish I could sell a piece of my soul for $10 million USD. Well, actually, Wendell, <laughs> she felt that $10 million was kind of tone deaf, considering you know the country's going broke and people are starving. So it's now uh, ten million or best offer. Could I do like a seventy-year wow. lease? Is that like a thing? You can give it back. <laughs> I feel like she really cares about me by making that change. What happens if she dies before the lease is up? Well, it'll just be in limbo for a finite amount of time. Oh, okay. That's fine. All right. Who knows? Limbo might be fun. Is that transferable? I imagine so. Like most property rights. Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um. When I read this headline, I mean, especially given, uh, I've been watching a lot of the protests and kind of just the cold, dead beatings and, you know, less than lethal shootings and tear gassings and stuff. And like how those, uh, it seems like a lot of those, they had to bring in a lot of cops. So I think they're hiring some of the most bloodthirsty people that they can find. (laughs) And I'm just thinking to myself, 
How long before this kills somebody who is locked in the back of it? Because remember that these cars are designed, you can't get out the back doors. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Uh, how Ford's latest tech helps police, uh, police vehicles neutralize things that are infectious. So the story here is that the new Ford police enforcement vehicle, when no one is in the vehicle, supposedly, it will heat the internals of the vehicle to 133 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes, which is enough to kill more than 99% of any contaminants people. or contagions that might be in there. <laughs> yeah, people. That's accurate. <laughs> yes. It will kill all living things, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they didn't really go into a lot of detail, uh, but they said it uses the drivetrain. So I imagine it revs up. Yeah. So can you imagine being cuffed in the back of this car? Oh, See, no. I really think Ford engineers have over-engineered this because the ultraviolet, like, just throw some ultraviolet LEDs in the, uh, you know, in the uh, the headers of the of the, the vehicle, like the. But I think the reason is because they said it goes back to model year twenty thirteen. So I think this is retroactive. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's Somehow. a good-looking car. It'll look even better when it's on fire. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wonder. Like, is is there a common chemical that would combust at that temperature? Oh yeah, there's a lot of things that will that are extremely volatile at that temperature. Although you could, if you broke the window, you would ruin it. Yeah. So how would you get it in there? Hmm. Could be interesting. Yeah, that's going to kill somebody. And what a terrible way to go. Yeah. 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 That would be awful. That's going to be I'm sure we'll hear about that very soon. Yeah. Well, the Japanese are uh, they're famous for being a very stoic people. Kind of uh, like, you remember when uh, Fukushima happened? And a lot of the older people were like, all right, I will go in and clean it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, we know we're going to die. We're old. Whatever. You know, now, that's an admirable quality. But. Uh, it definitely would take some of the fun out of some parts of life when you live like that, especially amusement parks. Japanese amusement parks to ban screaming on roller coasters. You know, some of the fun on, of screaming on a roller coaster is just the catharsis of just letting... It's like, not even the roller coaster, just screaming, you know... <laughs> screaming like a, into the wind? Yeah. Just... Ah, ah, my children have abandoned me and I'm going to die alone. Ah. <laughs> So uh, the idea here is that just opening your mouth could spread the virus. So just keep it buttoned up. Just sit silently. Enjoy the coaster <laughs> for what it is. Go into full Amish mode. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see those horrible videos where somebody throws up on one of the tilt a whirls? Yeah. And it's, actually, I think that wasn't that in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a level of viscera and horror that's uh, unsettling. Do you ever go back to an amusement park if you're in that situation? No. That's you know the local carnivals that kind of thing it is what turned me off to that because I didn't get hit in the face with that but the smell was just so yeah. overwhelming in that like confined space it was like you know what I don't need, it's, I'm done you think they throw you like a voucher or something they know? did not <laughs> well you didn't get hit by it I'm saying if you get hit by it <laughs> this one so this is the Onion but it's the AV Club which is like actual news it's not the 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 lampoon part of the onion and i did check and this was on other websites it's <laughs> it seems like parody i admit but i think this is a real story just yeah. a really really bad idea lg poland apologizes for ads showing how good its phone is at taking upskirt photos so i watched the video and creeper shots yes but i don't think it's quite upskirt but it was it was I, borderline i mean that's pedantry yes well, you couldn't but show. it wasn't <laughs> You couldn't show that on the commercial, right? Yeah, yeah. Which should be, that's like something should click in your mind. It's like, we're making a commercial about something we're not allowed to show on the platform. No, no. I know yeah. I know exactly how that went down in the ad agency. It was, oh God, we're swirling the drain. No one is paying attention <laughs> to anything. Look at the world events. This is really terrible. It's like, we have to do this. And it's like, Fred, that's going to be like super controversial. We can't do that. And it's like, listen, if we don't do this, the agency's not going to survive. And you're like, all right, roll it. Well, they got the headlines, right? Yeah, they really did. We're talking about it. You know, people so, are clicking on it. In the commercial, there's a guy in like the old person makeup and he takes the upskirt shot of this, you know, sexy young girl. But then when she like, she notices and confronts him, but the dual screen nature of the LG phone allows him to quickly hide what he has done. Well, he, he seemed to simultaneously take pictures with the front and rear facing cameras. And so when she looks through the photos, it was like he was taking a selfie, not he was taking pictures of her skirt or whatever. Genius. Absolute genius. That's one word. I think this is my favorite story this week. I love a good animal story. <laughs> I, I will never pass up a good animal story. And in this case, celebrity animal. 
And then there's some question about you know wh- whether it's true or not, but I like I'm gonna go ahead and believe it. I'm pretty sure the algorithm's also gonna really really ding us for this one, but oh, it's yeah. fine. Well, we did a, a story with this name in it last week. Yeah. Uh, did we get caught? Yeah, we did. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> Chris has already said the virus. Yeah, so yeah. So uh-huh. it's fine. Hitler's alligator that survived the Battle of Berlin has died in Moscow. An alligator who survived the bombing of Berlin in 1943 is rumored to have belonged to Hitler himself. Has it died in Moscow, aged 84. So wow. here's the best thing about this alligator story. During the bombing... Of Berlin in forty three, he escaped a zoo. They didn't catch him till forty six. <laughs> this guy Where was, was just, he? I don't know. He was just out there, just running wild. All those stories about alligators living in the sewers. This is where it comes from. So they got a picture of him here. Good looking guy. Seems like he was enjoying himself. Uh, they got him in forty six. Uh, he was actually born in the U S. What a crazy life this alligator <laughs> had. Born in the U S. Went to Berlin. Went through a war. And then ended up in Moscow and lived out the rest of his days. And they point out that, uh, you know, most of the people who worked at that zoo, like when they were young, they were like, oh, wow, there's the alligator. <laughs> and he, he's still here today. Well, not anymore. He's not gone. anymore. He died. Rip. Tragedy. Pour one out for that guy. I don't know. I like to think that while he was, you know, <laughs> Little Benito, I don't know and what his name when was. When he was in captivity with Hitler, he was just constantly plotting his death. <laughs> I thought it was all like Breaking Bad, where it's like you were always being threatening you with being fed to the alligator. <laughs> oh, I mean, it could have been the opposite. It could have been just like whispering. It's like they control the banks, Adolf. What was the movie? You have to stop them. Did anybody make the meme? Did anybody the meme that we talked about last year or uh, last week? Uh, did anybody use the meme yet to, to, it's like informing Hitler that his alligator died <laughs> in that scene? Oh, oh no. the downfall. Yeah. Downfall yeah. Scene. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, did he have like a big, I guess he had a big menagerie of animals. Yeah. Which is interesting because all the drug lords and stuff do that. <laughs> so that's that same that personality. <laughs> why did, you know, why does, it must be a genetic trait for it to be so widespread. I wonder what sort of undocumented evolutionary scenarios have been have existed mike tyson had a big like <laughs> th- illegal animals and stuff and of course the tiger king people like apparently had a big business just selling illegal tigers if we were a little bit more with it we would be making like carol well, carol what's her name we'd i've be, forgotten her name already <laughs> we'd be making jokes about that and uh the other guy i really enjoyed that but then it was just out of my m- mind immediately like, you know, it wasn't anything that i really needed to hang on to it was just horrible people doing horrible things in an entertaining fashion i think they're making a movie about it yeah with Nicolas cage is he gonna be the tiger king yeah wow (laughs) i can see that well uh in some parts of the world uh prostitution is legal and you know it's like uh, there's rules and stuff and but even with it being legal when there's a pandemic you know it's not a good idea can't really do it because there's no way to uh social distance during the act of sex (laughs) but perhaps out of desperation some of the sex workers say that they have a solution although uh medical professionals say uh, no (laughs) sex workers say that uh oh reverse cowgirl position prevents the spread Mm, no this is uh from news.com.au so this is in australia but i think it's talking about i think it's somewhere in europe they're talking about yeah yeah yeah, it's uh, says Switzerland. It goes out of its way to say that the health organizations are saying no, that's not that's not how that but works. If it's haven't they found the virus in like Yes. Seen it in like Well yeah. you would you would assume that this is protected sex though. I guess. But, I mean there would probably still be some fluids. Yeah. That would, especially if uh, somebody's on top of you. Now, if this is in Switzerland, do your prostitutes go into your social tracking app? Yeah, if the if the app is running and you well, both have a phone, it's going to increase your odds, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You get some interesting sociological data there as well. But the uh, some of the people who are involved said that uh, they used a, an, an interesting phrase, Cortesian rings. I think they called it because, like, now that the legal is there sex, an emperor? like, <laughs> the, now that the legal sex is. Uh, you know you can't do it people are going black market 
And I don't know what like what a Cortesian ring is. Also, uh, you know, I mean, like our monetization is gone, right? So <laughs> yeah, it's way, way, way past that. <laughs> I'm not reading that. <laughs> Something's <laughs> definitely not safe. Something's, de- you know, let's put New York officials. So that's not even in Switzerland. Uh, I got to think that's uh, risky at the best of times. Yeah. So, yeah, just at your own risk. I thought about ending with that story and the alligator story. Like you say, animal stories are always great. But I don't know. I kind of like this one. Uh, just because... Remember when the pandemic started and strip clubs were having trouble here, somebody immediately came up with this idea, but in reverse. <laughs> because in Japan, everything's got to be like weird and backwards. Now, <laughs> you could not make a business model out of this in the U.S. It's, it's a weird cultural difference. Uh, Japanese buff men delivery service will send beefcake and also things to eat uh, 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 to your door. Yeah, so uh, that's literally all it is. Nothing. Well, we we literally had this here in like Portland. We talked about the the Portland the strippers. Yeah, yeah they were they were doing uh, Uber Eats or something. And it was exactly the same too because the strippers couldn't touch you. They maintained the six feet, which is what they're talking about here. But they would come inside and pop the top off for a couple of minutes, which is exactly what you get with these gentlemen. Krista, what's your level of interest here? Uh, zero. <laughs> it's probably really expensive, and it's like I just want something to eat. Well, so. now you might be surprised. During the first month, delivery is free. <laughs> Why? Also, uh, this guy is the uh, very rich man who is uh, doing this service. Like this is his brainchild, and you might, if you're thinking, "Oh, what well, that face looks familiar," yeah, he's the guy in the middle. I was just thinking uh, hair club for men. It's like that guy gives a very strong hair club for men. I'm not just a founder. I'm also a client. He's not a client. (laughs) How do you know? I mean, I think, you know, I think he probably is a client, but you know. Now, Krista, if we start at the top left and go uh, clockwise, one, two, three, four, five, six, what, which, which number are you choosing? Oh, for the dudes? Yeah, if you're uh, gonna you're gonna if, pick out of this lineup, if you had to like uh, in the top picture, you had to accept food delivery from one of these people or anything else, just overall choice. I guess one. I don't. Hmm. Really. So not the biggest guy, but uh, I don't know. It maybe uh, maybe the most cut guy. You know, definitely. You're going for the shred over the bulk. He's tall. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I, I like tall guys. My husband's very tall. So, yeah. Oh, there's this other picture. Uh, too. Uh, <laughs> I like how the, the bottom right guy is always looking very serious. <laughs> like, some of them are smiling, but not him. It's all business. I'm very serious about getting your food to you while it's still warm. They have pictures of the food you can get. Or cold. Are they shirtless the entire time? Like, I just don't. And they're, they're no. not wearing shoes either. Like, I have a lot of questions. Shirtless is actually optional. Although, why would you? <laughs> shirt, no shirt, no shoes. No service. It would be fun to order one of those, like, house cleaning services. It's not really a house cleaning service, but then, like, hand them a mop and be like, have fun with the toilet. <laughs> that's a, that's a actually mop. A, a popular joke where it's like you know the girl shows up in like the heels and the skin tight shirt and it's just like there's a farmer and he's hoeing his field and she's like I'll do anything you want for $25 and he's like really? and she's like yeah anything and he answers the hoe and gives you $25 <laughs> no actually Krista now that you mentioned that they're going to wear these uh, traditional this garb I don't know what they called them but kimono? Uh, I don't think it's a kimono it's a but kimono. it's what you wear in food service in Japan Oh, so they'll wear that to your house and once they come inside, pop it off if you want them to. Uh, weird. I don't know. Well, that's it for the news this week. Thanks again to Linode. Check out the Linode link. It might be this might be it for society. <laughs> yeah, we, we filmed this next week. We'll see. <laughs> What's your guys' plan? Full on, like devastating riots. What do you do? Hope that I the food know. supplies at the office will hold out until it blows over. You're gonna bunker at the office. Yeah. I, I, our, 
our area is so small, I can't see that, but I don't know. A, a week ago, I would have told you that 30 American cities wouldn't have been rioting. They wouldn't have called the National Guard on citizens. So, I mean. <laughs> I have enough supplies here at the office to cover all of the exposed glass. So there's that at least. But I, I, I do think we should say, or at least I should, I'm not going to speak for you two, but uh, probably burning the Dollar Tree was not the way to go here. No, I would agree with that. I, but, I think violence in general is not the way to go. Well, but there was a murder. Yeah. Well, but, and it was blatant murder. And here's, here's the thing you have to think about, I think, in this context. What happens if he didn't die? Well, I think most of the time they don't die and there's still no reform. Exactly. The answer is yeah. if he didn't die, nothing happens. And it was over a $20 bill, a fake $20 bill. So That's obscene. Uh, yeah, I, we definitely have a problem. Again, the Dollar Tree Corporation is innocent here. <laughs> But something does need to happen, and it wouldn't have in any other way, so... Uh. Weird times. And they're getting weirder. And Fill I'm out gonna, your apocalypse bingo cards now. I'm gonna be watching every frame. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. Weird. I'm gonna go just... I can't... I just, it's not happening. I, it's, it's a sense of... You know, I'm, I'm... I don't know. It's just a sense of helplessness. It is mentally draining, but I can't... I can't stop myself. I don't know why. All right. On that note, note. See you next week. At least there's some routine in your life. Something. Nightly burnings. <laughs> you can tell what time it is by how many buildings are. <laughs> I meant the weekly news, but you know, next week we might be doing the weekly news, and there's like fire and terribleness behind us, or it's like from our phones. It's like oh, we're here for the news. Fine. Third degree burns. Yeah. All right. All right.